Hey guys, good evening everyone. Welcome back to my channel. This is Miss JD once again for another episode of our daily stock market insights. Time now, it's already um, 12.36 in the morning of uh, June 9th. So this is going to be a pre-open uh, technical analysis for our uh, June 9th market day. All right. So uh, just hang in there. If this is the first time you're watching my video, I do review stocks in the Philippine market every single day. And uh, sometimes I would also review cryptocurrencies and the U.S. market. So if this is the type of video you want to watch every single day, uh, you're invited. Kind of click the subscribe button and the notification bell so you're always updated whenever I have new videos. Okay, so um, like as always, we normally start with the index. Uh huh. So looks like uh, our, our index, like I mentioned yesterday, is consolidating uh, very near at the resistance area. And uh, normally when we do this, and let's say the volume is also sustained, chances are we, sh we will be breaking the resistance any moment from now. So like what happened right here, okay? On the week of the 27th, um, there was a consolidation right at the resistance area. And then the following day on uh, the 2nd of June, there's a, a massive jump in the price. So, uh, what I'm thinking at the moment here, this is already establishing a potential support at its previous resistance um, right over here. And it's an area, so it could be anywhere from 6.7 to 6.8. We used to have a support right here, guys, so uh, that's a good sign. We could be, um, you know, breaking that and uh, that resistance, and we might be establishing a support at that level again, forming this kind of pattern right here. And then probably it will revisit that before it continues to move higher again. Similar to what's happening here. Okay. So uh, looking really, really promising at the moment for the index. So I hope um, most of your stocks, particularly the stocks in the index, are also showing signs of recovery. And uh, look at this. 29 million on foreign buying. That means investors are already showing interest into um, the Philippine market. So let's just uh, try to understand how each of these stocks are performing. Let's go from top to bottom, the highly traded ones. Some of these are not part of the index, but, uh, you know, are secondary stocks, but are very, uh, uh, are, are gaining popularity nowadays. Let's see. Uh, let's start with Ever. Ever, I, I talked about this yesterday, guys. I said that there is a big possibility that it could uh, even go on a gap up, which happened today. And then it, it went up, uh, although uh, we are right. Uh, it went up indeed, but there was still a, a sell-off that happened. I just don't know what time of the day this sell-off happened. Okay, so June 9th or 8th, this was the gap up, right? It was sustained, but on the last 30 minutes, so we're lucky. Yeah, the, the stock even uh, continued to move higher uh, most of the time today or majority of the time today. And the decline just happened uh, on the last uh, 30 minutes. So 15, 15, yeah, around that time. Um, now looking at the 15 minute chart, you will have already uh, started the sell off. I am assuming with this kind of candlestick, there will be a continuation of the sell-off. So just be extra careful. Normally when a stock that's not really um, backed up by a very good fundamentals, uh, but correct me if I'm wrong, I do not know the big picture of this stock. I have not seen any update around this. This is just, this could just be a possible pump and dump thing, right? Uh, two to three days worth of acceleration and then uh, decline. So in case I do not have the any insider news, uh, just feel free to drop a comment, please. So at least we could help one another, uh, especially for those people who may have entered at, um, at this level, especially around the 0.40, because uh, we don't know if uh, that level will be revisited um, uh, again tomorrow. So, but my take given the the pattern that we have right now uh this for me is a, a bearish uh, candlestick so there might be a continuation of the drop and revisit probably the 0.22 area um 
and then try to consolidate there before it goes up again. Because take note, guys, um, you are already at the overbought, and we don't have a big picture to uh, refer to. This is just purely um, the, the chart that's that's telling us the story. Okay, so there's no backstory or there's no news that supports any project in the pipeline. Okay, so the the next stock that we want to check out would be ASEN. ASEN got a red today, so uh, yeah, it just respected the uh, short-term resistance that we have right here. So this is going to be, um, if you're looking at it for long-term investing, it's a good opportunity for those people who may have not entered yet and are still considering the next possible drop or an area where you could potentially enter once again would be around the 725. Overall, you see this, it's moving sideways. So chances are we are just going to respect this kind of a movement for now um, unless we see a really massive volume that's going to trigger or any news that will um, uh, influence the, the big jump in the price. Otherwise, sideways could just be uh, um, observed in the coming days or weeks. Let's talk about LRW. So this is uh, a, an interesting movement, guys. There's a big uh, volume that happened today. Notice the volume that we have uh, the previous weeks and months. Really nothing on it. And then all of a sudden, there is a big jump in the volume. And we are also triggering the upper Bollinger Band. So I feel that there will be a continuation for this stock uh, tomorrow. Okay, so if you're still interested um, and uh, probably on the conservative side, but still want to uh, experience this, uh, try to get get in as near as you can to the two peso level. And then if you're happy with your gain, uh, try to lock in some gains. Uh, let's see if there's really news here. No data. Interesting. Or it's just my... Uh, I don't know why it's not showing us any information, but please do your research. Uh, the scope of my analysis here every day is mostly um, just technical analysis. I use the Bollinger Band. I use the RSI and the volume plus the candlesticks as our, our main indicators. So if um, there are other info that you can probably uh, mine somewhere else, just feel free to uh, share. So, so far, just looking at the technicals, it's a, you know, um, a good uh, move. It's triggering the upper band. We don't know if this is going to do the same, something like this. Continue probably one to two days more. Um, just in case, for instance, the price reaches around the three peso area. And then you enter around two. Let's see how much you're going to get. Let's say somewhere half, halfway there. 194. Oh, that's a 50% gain. So it's up to you if you really want to maximize it or just halfway you're happy and then you lock in some gains. Uh, that's even better. Okay. So really interesting stock to watch out tomorrow. ICT, like I mentioned, never fails. ICT is very, very uh, strong. Um, Continuous uptrend with some consolidation that happened uh, the previous uh, um, in this period over here, first quarter of the year, but the the improvement is sustained. It just rests uh, for several days and it continue. Uh, fundamentals for ICT is really really strong. Um, <clears throat> so my take here is uh, look at it for long term, guys. We are now at the I think we're at the 52 week high. So chances are it will create brand new highs. So when you are at the all time high or in the, yeah, I think this is already all time high. When you are in an all time high, chances are, um, you know, you don't have a, a ceiling. It is the market who will dictate the ceiling. So we don't know, it can even go uh, really massively um, upwards and then um, we don't know where it is going to do, continue, but look at it. In terms of fundamentals, um, and see if this is something you'd like to hold on, hold on to for for a long period of time. Okay, ICT for Dito, you have still 
still resting, moving sideways, as you can see right here. I am still looking at our MA20S, an area where it could still, you know, possibly be revisited. So I'm, I will not be surprised if 9.33 will still be uh, touched uh, anytime this week. And so if you are still considering to add more volume, that's the perfect spot. 9.33. What's good about the situation is we have uh, already crossed the MA20 line. So your MA20 could now be your support. So more to come here. Apple. What is your story here? no big picture as well so um, i really don't have um, any insider uh, info except for the news that i see here um, I, I haven't really visited the wall or the social media feed of investagram sometimes there are also uh, uh, good information shared there but a lot of noise <laughs> so sometimes you get uh, uh, influenced or you you know you become a, a, a victim of FOMO because of what you read in the social media feed of uh, Instagrams so just be extra careful when you uh, read posts there now let's go back to Apple um, a great jump in the volume notice right here so if I am just to compare it like here no volume and then all of a sudden there was a big spike um, then it triggered the upper band and even if it declined it just re-established a new support at its previous resistance and when it declined look at the volume that means people have been holding on to their position and then after that there's again a big jump in the volume so i see that continuation so i'm thinking um just be extra careful though because again uh, we don't have a big picture here so this could also be another pump and dump thing so um, anywhere from 0.90 to 1 peso uh, would still be a good um, entry price because it might just repeat this behavior over here. So it's still an opportunity. If you're able to get in um, at a good spot, you can still uh, generate some good profit out of it. So if you want, you can just enter around 1 peso and then exit somewhere halfway, 130, 150. At least you already have locked in some gains. Uh, it's very difficult to time the market and enter at the very bottom and exit at the very top. Uh, even the most expert uh, traders are also not able to do that consistently. Some are able to do it. Uh, part of it is lock as well. Okay. Um, but at least if it's moving um, upwards, try to consider locking in some gains. The next would be Ali. I also talked about this previously. If you are to backtrack my videos, I, I mentioned about Ali be, um, having a buy signal. I just forgot what day I created it, but I think it was around this period. Uh, you can just go ahead and check that. Um, but so far, you had a resistance here. It just rested, but looks like there is still uh, some momentum. Volume is there. So we might see a continuation uh, to the upside. It's good that it rested. In fact, at least, you know, those uh, profitable, those traders who are already profitable have already exited. And uh, mostly uh, what's left here, are, you know, the uh, uh, long-term investors, at least, um, you know, that there will be, there could be a potential continuation because of the rest that it did here. So the next possible resistance that I see would be 39 area, 39.75. So this level over here, guys, is already for mid to long term investors. For position traders, this is the spot. This exact day, this day, May 26th, could have been your perfect entry if you are a position trader. Um, however, if you still are interested at this level over here, this is already a position for mid to long term investors. So those people who don't really mind staying in a stock for an extended period of time because we are looking at the bigger picture. And there is still that picture, okay? The bigger picture that I'm referring to. Look at this prior. You had a 52. Um, that was your, your highest point. So just look at it for, you know, what are try to understand what are the projects that Ayala 
uh, has at the moment and in the coming months or years and bank on bank on that uh, uh, information. BDO, still overall side, oh, no, long term, uh, in the short term, uh, it, this is already uh, a resistance, yeah, possible resistance, uh, but let's see if it is going to continue. Somehow it has already broken this area, right? Created a brand new uh, possible support now at the 106th level. Let us see if it is going to continue moving up. You have uh, June 11, next X day. That's a dividend. And the X date is June 11th, 0.30. Not that much, but at least, you know, this is one of the major companies in the country that, that gives out a consistent dividend. But really don't expect a lot. That's 30 cents times 4 because it gives out quarterly. So not much, around 1%, 2%. MBT, also sitting at a possible resistance, guys. So let us see if it is going to continue. The candlestick, though, is uh, for me, today's candlestick is a bearish candlestick. If this appears um, at the resistance area, chances are it will revisit uh, some key levels. So if you want to know which area where it could possibly um, go back and pull back, Go ahead and find the lowest spot here, which is right here, and then drag it all the way up here. And uh, your key level would be 47.77, 46.97, and lowest would be 46.32. Those are our thresholds. If it crosses the MA20 line, I'm not really super uh, confident that it will bounce anytime soon. That's already going to be a downtrend. But um, normally, if it is like this, there's a momentum going up. There will be days when it is going to rest and pull back. And for me, the ideal, it would be up to, uh, you know, your MA20 line. Actually, up to here. 46.91. That's the safest uh, area. Okay. Wow. So we were able to review these stocks. I hope uh, some of these... Uh, let me just go back to CLI because last night I also talked about CLI. I said it might go back to your MA20 line, but hey, the sentiment, the buying sentiment is back. Um, I think uh, people are ready to buy more uh, and uh, they've already reflected the June 15th as the X date, 123%. So if you are really looking into you know, long-term gains, um, even if during the X date it will drop, uh, huh, I don't think it is going to go as low as 50%. Uh, right away you have some gains here. If you want to sell it, then let's say it goes back to the six peso level, you are still a gain right there. So just, uh, you know, I, I have a feeling people will just be uh, rushing tomorrow to enter uh, because we have a bounce that happened right here. So maybe um, if you want to secure your spot, seven peso, seven peso level, it's already a, a good area to catch. So yeah, that's it. Good luck on your trades uh, later today. It's already 12.55 in the morning. In the meantime, I hope I was able to um, give some clarity and some insights that will help you uh, uh, build your game plan today and in the coming days for these talks that I've talked about. In the meantime, thank you and bye-bye for now.